Ready. Lower my audio just a tad. Uh, so you're telling me you're waiting on me, and then you're like, I gotta lower my. Audio. I edited last week's podcast. I was a little hot, I got a little excited, a little carried away. You get hot and heavy. Mm-hmm. And how? Someday I will get a better camera. I hate this camera. I need to fix those lights too. I have a I very old lot. I have a very old Logitech you can have. No. Okay. Okay. Ready? Let's do this. All right, we are recording. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Not the Worst Podcast. This is episode 22. I am JD, and I am joined by Anthony, and we are going to be talking about gaming stuff and a little virtual reality and things of that nature. How you doing, Anthony? I'm doing fantastic. It's not Friday yet, so I'm not doing amazing. Hooray. We recorded our last podcast last Friday, but now we're recording on Wednesday again because this is the normal time for normal people who don't screw everything up. I Not my fault I got sent to Alabama. Mm-hmm. It's not anybody's fault when they get sent to Alabama. It is only <laughs> Alabama's fault. <laughs> Roll Tide. Uh, I mean, what? So, yeah. So, for uh, the intro, I just wanted to remind people about Total War Troy. Yes. Uh, we talked about this. Man, when did we talk? That was like episode two or three. That was a long time it ago. It was a long time ago. I completely yeah, forgot about forgot this. It. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so, Epic, if you... if I'm. If you're a gamer, you already know that Epic Gamer Store is a thing. And you, whether you like it or hate it, they've been, you know, creeping into Steam's marketplace there. You know, trying to take over some of that Steam share uh, of the gamer world. But they've been also been releasing a lot of free games to get people to come over there, right? To just All you have to do is download the client and log in, and you can download free games like every month. However, this Total War thing is weird. Because this isn't just some old game that they're giving out for free. This is a brand new game that has never been released and is part of a major blockbuster franchise, the Total War franchise. This is Total War Saga Troy. Brand new game, mm -hmm. never been sold before, never even been played before. And they're giving it to you for free on August 13th. Tomorrow. 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 Zero nine hundred. Depending nine... on when you heard this thing. Yes, true. Anyway, so <sighs> August thirteenth, you can get Total War Saga Troy completely free on the Epic Store. It's a brand new game. After this, it's going to be jumping up to regular price, like sixty bucks or whatever. So, uh, be ready for it. Grab it while you can it's... and call it a day. Only free for twenty four hours from from nine a.m. Eastern time to nine on the thirteenth to nine a.m. Eastern time on the fourteenth. That's your window to get it for free. After that, you're out of luck. Yep. So interesting. We talked we've we talked about it weeks ago. Hopefully you marked it in your calendar. Anyway, that's that's it for the intro. Let's move on to our first story. First big topic. Uh Shroud is back. Don Don Don. If you don't know who Shroud is, he's one of the biggest streamers in the world. Uh, he's a FPS streamer. He's a shooter streamer. He got famous for playing Counter-Strike and has since become a full-time streamer. Um, and he was one of the big ones that moved to Mixer when Mixer was paying streamers to come over there along with Ninja. Uh, Shroud moved to Mixer. And when Mixer folded, which it did last month, and we talked about that too, so you should be listening to our podcast to stay up to date on all the latest news about streamers. With that being uh, said, Mixer if, is officially shut down now because that happened a week ago, yeah, two weeks ago? A few weeks ago. A few weeks ago. Yeah. July 22nd, I think. So, yeah, it's been down for a while. Um, but, but so Mixer went down, and then Twitch had its gaming Me Too movement where a lot of people got shut down, and Dr. Mm -hmm. Disrespect got banned, but nobody really knew why, although everybody kind of thinks it's related to that. Uh, but then... There was this period of time with Mixer Shutdown and with Dr. Disrespect Band that Ninja Shroud and Dr. Disrespect, three of the biggest names in streaming, weren't streaming. And so there were all these guesses and you know people were speculating about what they might be doing, if they're setting up their own system or something like that, blah, blah, blah. But eventually, Dr. Disrespect came back. 
with his tail between his legs. And Ninja is back now with his tail between his legs. And now, finally, Shroud is back. And he streamed today, uh, August 12th. He had over 500,000 viewers. I think it peaked at like 516 or 517,000. And even he said that he was shocked because he only expected about 200,000. Uh, so he got double what he was expecting. So were... obviously these guys have clout, right? Like this is, you know, whatever you might think of streaming, there is something big there that people are interested in looking at. And mm. I mean, and he's not even... Like he's just a guy that plays video games and he just got famous for it. And it's kind of crazy. Yeah. And he has no, like, he's not like Dr. Disrespect where he puts on a big show or has a character yeah. he acts out as he's, he's just him playing a game. That's it. Yeah, exactly. Dr. Disrespect has his production values. Like he had a Lamborghini for his intro on his show, uh, when he streamed, uh, and Ninja obviously has his production value. Like he's, he's great at marketing. He's been on ESPN and stuff like that. Shroud, is pretty famous, but he doesn't have all that flash and grammar. Mm -mm. glamour. He's just a dude. Uh, and, you know, but, it, I mean, it's crazy. And so he's back, and he's staying on Twitch. He's exclusive to Twitch. Ninja and Dr. Disrespect. I don't know about Ninja, actually. I don't know if he's exclusive anywhere, but Dr. Disrespect is definitely on YouTube. Yes. Um, so we got Shroud on Twitch, Disrespect on YouTube, The Doc. And then Ninja, I think, is speaking, also on YouTube. Speaking of uh, Dr. Disrespect's showmanship and an extravagant return to YouTube, well, not return to YouTube, but uh, arrival on YouTube, um, Shroud even told viewers in his stream not to expect anything outrageous from the stream, citing Di Dr. Disrespect highly produced YouTube stream. So he's like, yeah. <laughs> that included an elaborate Lamborghini introduction. So he's like, look, I'm just here to stream, man. That's uh, it's gonna be a low key yep. stream. Yeah. But that that's um, all that's all Doctor Disrespect is. He um he's right. He he's puts on the show. This whole mystery behind his band, he's milking it for all it's worth, and he's gonna put on a show with it. And that's who he is now. Shroud has as of right now, I don't think he has any controversy against him. Um, so he's just like an average dude that plays games and streams. He doesn't get into a whole lot. He's just there to game. You should say the stream, which there's nothing wrong with that. But like JD said, it proves there are people there that a lot of people make fun of streaming. Uh, I have a few at work that make fun of me when I talk about it with my coworker. And I was like, hey, I mainly do it as a hobby. Yeah, I'd like to make money off of it. But uh, there are people like Shroud, 516,000 viewers. He only expected 200K, like JD said. And now he's. And they said they boosted Valorant's numbers for that day. That's, I think, the most yeah. Valorant has had since release, if I remember. Because they only hit, what, 200 when they came out? Uh, well, during the beta, they had like a million or something. Did they? they, they like a record when the beta hit, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but yeah, since it's been live, it hasn't been nearly as big. Um, but yeah. Um, and yeah, that's that's pretty much it. There's not really a whole lot else to say except that he's back. If you want to watch Shroud, you can go on Twitch. Uh, I highly recommend watching me or Erconda instead because we're awesome and we don't have 500,000 viewers. So give us no. viewers. Please and thank uh, you. <laughs> so that's it. All right, next topic. You want to talk about this one since you dropped it? Uh, Yes, this one is about Rainbow Six Siege. I'm assuming that's the one you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. okay so rainbow six siege um i played it a little bit i am i haven't played it online i went through the campaign and that's all i've done with it i got it on three the xbox one when it first came out i was in turkey with very crappy internet and i was not even going to waste my time trying to play that online on the internet speeds i had because it's the type of game you can't be lagging or behind in any way it's very competitive and you get a one it's like most competitive games that are going in tournaments you get one time to spawn and that's it and you're done so it, i was like i'm not even gonna waste my time trying to do this and i haven't picked played it since i've been back not saying it's a bad game or anything it's just i never got around getting back to it so with that being said another ubisoft famous game an old one that has i don't remember when the last one came out um splinter cell Splinter Cell is making an appearance with a Sam Finch Fisher playable character as their newest um, operator. 
Uh, I don't know. He's called Operator Zero. I don't think they're actually calling him Sam Fisher. I mean, they, in their tweet, they call him Sam Fisher, but I think he's just going to go by the name Operator Z- Zero. Uh, we haven't been able to confirm if it's going to be voiced by Michael Ironsides yet. Um, it or if no, because they do talk. They talk. They have like voice cues when they uh, go through a match and stuff. So, uh. Let's see. I'm gonna actually look this up. If JD, you got anything you want to add to this? Well, I'm gonna see if. Um, just the thing about you were saying when the last Splinter Cell game came out, that was in 2013. But it's so been it's a been while. Seven years at least. Yeah. So that's that's kind of crazy. Um, but that being said, Ubisoft Ubisoft hasn't really forgotten about Splinter Cell. I think they came into some problems with making the new games. I think gaming kind of has changed since Splinter Cell came out. Uh, the first few games were pretty awesome, and they kind of fell downhill in popularity after that. He's an interesting character. I think everybody likes Sam Fisher. I don't know anybody that says, oh, Sam Fisher sucks. He's a pretty badass guy. He's mm-hmm. got the, the signature three-dot night vision goggles. He works in the dark. He can climb, climb on things and drop down from above. Uh, I like those games. I remember really enjoying the Splinter Cell games. So it's cool that they are bringing him back and putting him in Rainbow Six, at least as an operative. Like, he's not going to get his own game, but he is going to get special features. Uh, They're talking about possibly that his specialty might be able to kind of go through walls and see what's on the other side, something like that. They aren't sure exactly what the operative's specialist abilities are going to be, but it should have his voice. It should have his his mannerisms and that kind of thing. So that should be a lot of fun. Yeah. So, so far there's nothing saying that he will be voicing Sam Fisher, uh, Michael Ironside. Oh, you mean the original voice actor? Yeah, I don't think so. The, there's room, There's that. a bunch of rumors every all over, on all kinds of websites saying he's going to, but nothing confirmed. Um, there's one particular article saying that Ubisoft has no choice but to voice with Microsoft, Michael Ironsides because he is Sam Fisher. I think they got wishful thinking in there. Um, it would be nice because Michael Ironsides has been Sam Fisher from the start, so it's going to be kind of weird to hear somebody else voice him if he has any speaking lines in the game. So we'll see. Um, it looks like it was mainly a teaser. Um Yeah, but I mean, it was just a reveal trailer. It wasn't really. Uh, I don't know story. the last time that Michael Ironside voiced Sam Fisher because he didn't do it in the last games. Um, he only did it in the first few. So they but might bring back good... the guy that replaced him, maybe. Um, or maybe they go a different direction. Maybe they like prequel him and make him younger or something. I don't know. I don't know what they're going to do with it, but I. <sighs> I haven't seen anything that confirms Ironside is involved, and I'd be really surprised if he came back for a two-bit part in a, another video game that's not his. Um, With no story to it, so he he would only yeah. be making like call-out voices lines in the game, like uh, enemy over yeah. there or enemy spotted or something like that. So right. it would be kind of the only reason I could see Ironside coming back is if this is a precursor to an announcement of a full-blown game. And so that this is basically marketing for that game, right? You're not um, far maybe, off. Maybe if they announce that there's a new Splinter Cell coming for the new generation of consoles, maybe that would justify why Ironside is here now. But there, we'll see. Appa- apparently in this article that I dropped by a Eurogamer, it's saying Ubisoft hasn't forgotten about its stealthy hero. Splinter Cell is getting an animated series on Netflix. So maybe yeah. he will voice Sam Fisher there. Um, maybe, um, maybe not. I don't know. Netflix has had a lot of ups and downs with things recently. I just yeah, read that the, they were trying to make an Avatar: The Last Airbender show, and the creators dropped I out. I saw that. So I saw that too. Yeah. So we'll see. It it seems like Netflix is throwing a lot around a lot of money, and it doesn't necessarily matter to them. Um, the outcome of throwing that money around. So we'll see. They also in that same article, I guess, there's a RPG. St- style game being done by Ubisoft called um, Tom Clancy Elite Squad and it's going to have like all stars from all the Tom Clancy games and Sam Fisher is supposed to be one of them so I, I who knows maybe he's a, a mold up game, to some, 
it, it's a mo oh yeah for mobile devices yeah, yeah. I, I can pass on that i'm not super thrilled about the mobile <laughs> yeah. genre and things mm -hmm. yeah i think i think we saw that trailer for elite squad at the last ubisoft forward mm. yeah and it it looks it didn't look great uh it's kind of it's kind of fortnite ish in the graphics it's it, it'd be like if sam fisher was in fortnite <laughs> um there is another so, ubisoft forward event this month we'll too so yeah, they've yeah they've been planning a couple of them just because E3 got canceled, so they mm -hmm. split it up just like Microsoft did uh, with all of its different game shows. Like they have another one coming up too, I think. Um, but yeah, so we'll see. We'll see what I happens with Sam Fisher. I mean, if you're a big fan of him and you like Rainbow Six Siege, at least you'll get to play him a little bit there. Um, and we'll see if that means anything bigger for Splinter Cell and that franchise, which has been pretty much forgotten over the years. Um. Yeah, that's all there is on that, I think. I got a few friends of mine that would probably wouldn't mind if he came back if Ubisoft did it right. Um, I yeah. think I can't remember which. There's only one Splinter Cell I vaguely remember people not really liking, and I can't remember which one that was. Um, I, don't know, was I, I played the original. I think there were th three original ones. Uh, Splinter Cell Chaos Theory is the last one I really remember playing. I remember that one um, too. Yeah. I don't know what came after that. Yeah. Yeah, and Splinter and Chaos Theory was the third game. So I played those first three games, and I really like them. At least the campaigns and stuff were really fun, um, really great stealth missions, and it's really hard to make a good stealth mission, and so it's really, really hard to do it three times in a row. Uh, but I think after Chaos Theory is when it, it all kind of fell apart. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, it would be kind of cool if this was a caveat into a new Splinter Cell, but I wouldn't hold your breath. Maybe they're testing the waters yeah. and using this little teaser to see how excited people get about it. Uh, it looks like the Tom Clancy they're going to use is of current age. Like he actually aged realistically over time because he looks much older in the release trailer, the reveal trailer. So uh, you may be dealing with an older, experienced Sam Fisher. Uh, I know. I know the yeah. joke was that. <laughs> <laughs> I know the joke was Stealth after each walker. <coughs> Yep. And I know the joke was after each game he would talk about how he's gonna retire, but something always pulled him back in. So who knows what what's the excuse for this one in Rainbow Six Siege is gonna be. Um but yeah, that's all I got I got to say about Rainbow Six. I, I think it's cool that they're bringing Sam Fisher in. It would give probably be a nice little teaser to hold Rainbow Six or um Splinter Cell fans over because it has been it's been seven years since the last uh, Splinter Cell so all you yeah uh, I mean Rainbow Six has been having its own success like it's it's mm. not like it's a, a low budget game or anything it's been booming pretty good over the last year or so so you know it's you know that's that kind of tie in kind of brings in new players and keeps the game going fresh so could just be that they just want Rainbow Six to have success you know could be they, yeah, they want something good but who knows who knows what they yeah. have in mind for all this um and for all you youngins out there one of the things jd and i know him well from is like starship troopers uh michael ironside yeah. for the voice right. actor yeah all but yeah troopers. maybe you guys can get yourself a little little taste of sam fisher again okay. uh, apparently he was in uh tom clancy ghost recon breaking point a uh, breakpoint in 2019 mm. he and he was voicing sam fisher so Who, he, michael he ironside had, was yeah in 2019 so, no. so, so michael ironside okay, did do sam, he could be back so he might do i'm looking at imdb he might be doing sam fisher again for siege if he did it for ghost recon breakpoint so who knows well, maybe, I mean, that's pretty good evidence that they, they got him doing more voices for Sam Fisher, so that's pretty good. Yeah, so who knows? Well, he he may or may not be. I actually failed to watch the reveal trailer to see if Sam Fisher even talks in it, so it doesn't yeah. look like yeah. it. I think it's just a cinematic show-off of, yeah, the fact that he's going to be coming. It's a little teaser. Right. Oh, and they, they freak you out a little, trick you out a little bit because the three dots are not where you think they are. Like they normally yeah. are. Yeah, I read that in the article. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. All right, cool. All right. That's Sam Fisher in Rainbow Six. 
And we are moving on. You want to do the next one too, since that one's also yours? Sure. Um, this one is just kind of neat, and it kind of plays back to several other articles we refer to about the military getting into new um, mil- warfare styles, like especially focusing more on drone operations. Um, and DARPA, obviously, as always, is involved. Uh, DARPA, and this is actually kind of cool. I didn't realize this until I read it just before we started doing the podcast, and I watched a short video about it. You guys can actually watch this happen. Um, DARPA's hosting what's called the Alpha Dogfight Trial. And what's happening is they got several teams from... It's near the bottom. I lost it. Oh, there it is. It's from... The the different teams are going to be from Aurora Flight Sciences, FC Science, Georgia Tech Research Institute, Heron Systems, Lockheed Martin, Prospecta Labs, Physical Physics AI, and Sortec. Uh, so these teams are going to go through three different trials to compete in the final. And it, one of them is like competing against each other. Then they're going to, they all designed an AI to basically operate an aircraft, like an actual fighter jet. In this case, they had it into a CGI F-16 because obviously they don't want an AI doing dogfights in a real jet and have it go rogue or something. But, um, so this is all like, it's going to be like a giant, it's going to basically be a crappy looking version of uh, Ace Combat. So the, the AI is going to control one jet, the red jet, and then they're going to be teamed, well, the teams are going to be broken up into brackets and they're going to compete against each other to see how well they do in their combat scenarios and their um, flight simulator combat scenarios. That's the first trial. The second trial, they're going to go up against more advanced AIs. They didn't specify where these AIs are coming from. Um, and then the teams that win in that bracket will go up against in Las Vegas, Nevada on September. No, November 2. It's going to be November 2019. Um, the AI, the winning AIs, uh, I don't, they didn't specify how many of them will go on through will go up against real air force pilot or real fighter pilots and they specifically say air force pilots um the navy and marines also have fighter pilots so i don't know if they'll have marine and navy fighter pilots show up for this or not but it specifically says air force pilots and this and they'll be controlling a virtual f-16 and a dog a alpha dogfight against these ai and if you register by august 17th so you if you're listening to this live the podcast live you have five days to register for this um hopefully i'll get this up and post it on youtube so if you're listening to this on youtube hopefully you hear it before august 17th and that's for u.s citizens if you're a non-u.s citizen i'm sorry your deadline's been missed it was august 11th for the deadline for non-u.s citizens um and you'll be able to actually watch these fighter pilots in a virtual reality take on an ai this compete and they say the main purpose of this is basically um the one of the quotes is regardless of whether the human or machine wins the final dogfight the alpha dogfight trials is all about increasing trust in ai if the champion ai earns the respect of an f-16 pilot we'll have to come one step closer to achieving effective human machine teaming in air combat which is the goal of ace the ace program and i don't remember what episode it was it was after we talked about the mosaic warfare but I don't know if you remember, J.D., they talked about a new AI. I can't remember the name of this AI. It's going to be like an R2-D2-styled AI that's going to be paired up with fighter pilots um, to help them yeah. make decisions. I think that's when we were talking about the drones, the little drones, right? The little drones, yeah. Um, the, so this looks like this is another attempt to test different AIs to see which would be more suited to have a AI pilot kind of intermingle kind of thing to either i don't know if it's gonna be intended for the drones we were talking about or maybe just something to have within the pilot kind of like a star trek styled ai that sits in the comms and talks to you and you talk to it and tell it to do different things so i mean it's kind of it's cool in the sense if you think of star trek ai it's scary if you think in the sense of sky um crap what's the robots from terminator sky labs skynet so if you're thinking in the terms of Skynet AI, it's kind of freaky. But if you think in terms of Star Trek AI, this is, this is pretty cool. Uh, we're getting closer to this kind of utopia. Not well, I was about to say utopia. We're nowhere near clear close to that utopia. Um, 
but uh, closer to the technology of Star Trek. We got 3D printers that are kind of like replicators at this point. We're getting AI to interact with fighter pilots. And we have the people are making different versions of tricorders, so to speak, to help scan for things like COVID. So, um, the, I mean, the article I saw had nothing to do with COVID because I read about it before COVID existed. But there were actually scientists from different countries working in the, on their own version of a medical tricorder. So it's kind of cool if you're a sci-fi Star Trek nerd to see things like this actually come to light. So yeah, uh, yeah, it's pretty neat. And if you're a huge nerd into AI and or you just like Milsim or dogfights, you can actually there is a link for it. Let me see if I can click. Yeah, um, I'll share this link in the description of the podcast when I post it on YouTube. Um, and if you hopefully you see it before the 17th, if you register before the 17th, you'll be able to watch the actual dogfight take place in las vegas and actually the graphics don't look that bad if this is what they're i mean it looks probably 360 generation graphics for the um dog fights but it'd be kind of cool if you're into that kind of thing so yeah i mean it's it's cool for a couple different reasons because it's you know it it'd be cool just to watch a dog fight if you've never really seen one um Mm -hmm. it's it's cool to watch computers learning to fly planes which is, you know, like you said, either kind of scary or pretty neat. Uh, and it's, you know, <laughs> it's just kind of, and it's a competition, right? There's a winner and a loser. So you can yeah. root for one side or the other. Um, it doesn't matter so much to them who wins or loses, but, you know, that doesn't stop you from putting five bucks on it. No, so. not at all. Actually, yeah, that's true. I mean, um, to them, it, and DARPA's mind and this ACE program's mind, they're going to win no matter what because either way they're going to learn a lot to improve for the future of what they're trying to achieve with AI or they're going to actually find the AI they're looking for. And this is very so, to how, how they do uh, chess matches against AI, right? Like they, yeah. Every, every now and then we come up with a new, more advanced computer and they say, okay, we need to know how smart this computer is. Let's put it against one of the best chess minds in the world. And then they have this big tournament to see how that works out. And then they use that information to make the computer even smarter the next time around. Right. Um, and so that's kind of what this is only the end result could be, you know, the end result, really what it could mean is less deaths in the military. Right. It could. Because yeah. If, if you're all of your planes are being flown by computers, nobody's going to die, which, you know, ain't, ain't that's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, maybe not so much for the enemy because they'll probably still have, depending who we're up against, have right. real pilots. So, you know. But for us, it's a good thing. Develop your AI enemy. God. <laughs> good grief! Get with the times already. Ugh. It yeah. is 2020 after all. <laughs> um. Yeah. So the third event. See, the article said it back in November, but if you go to the registration site, it says a DARPA Alpha Dogfight Trials Competition Event Number Three, which is supposed to be the AI versus pilot one, is August 18th through the 20th. So basically, you register on the 17th, and then the next day, you get to start watching the event. So the article, I'm going to just post the registration link because the article's link is not correct. This, uh, it says it starts on the 18th and you can register as late as the 17th so next week if you guys want to and you got nothing else to do virtual zoom gov webinar event so it's gonna be through zoom even <laughs> looks like a government version of zoom yeah. yeah but yeah basically the same thing so some of you've ever used zoom you, you'll be familiar with the program but i imagine it'll be a little more uh secure <laughs> yeah than zoom so so you'll probably have to like identify yourself or something, but that's fine. So if you got All nothing right. else to do in your board and you want to see an AI take on a real fighter pilot. Yeah. Check it out Go for it. All right. That's the end of our topics. We went through those pretty quick. I think mm-hmm. uh, you have anything you want to say for the outro or anything like that. I do actually one quick thing I saw as we were setting up uh, the Tony Hawk's pro skater one and two remaster or remake, however you want to call it. The, the demo's out and I've heard a lot of people that have played it are really enjoying it and I've heard people say it's everything they were hoping it to be so if you guys were interested in it if you're old like us and played the original one and two um, 
the beta or the demo is out for the remake and you can check it out and so far i've heard a lot of people say it's a lot of fun i will share a link to the demo in the description on youtube when i post this uh as a bonus link so and well no but probably by the time i post this uh rome or the not rome total war probably won't be free so i won't bother share a link on how to get rome uh total war free because it's gonna be too late if you see this on youtube (laughs) <laughs> all right that's it for us if you want to get in contact with the with us i always put our twitter handles in the description of every episode you can also use hashtag ntwp on twitter to share stories topics ask us questions whatever you want to do um and that's pretty much it next week will be episode 23 we're chugging right along getting a lot of these episodes out so thanks for joining us and we will see you later Bye.